you guys, my name is Marion and I'm going to talk to you guys about magnetic fields and field lines today. So the first thing I want to talk about, we're just going to jump right into it, is what are magnetic fields? What are they exactly? Well, the way that I like to think about it is it's the area around a magnet, just like this, in which there is a magnetic force. Um, so they are invisible. It's very similar to gravity. So if you think about the Earth's gravitational field, and if something enters that field, then um, the force of gravity works on that object, whatever that object is. So it's very similar. Um, and there's electric fields as well, which are kind of similar, but gravity is, you know, the most intuitive one. Um, so that's what I like to think about in order to really understand magnetic fields. Um, and the mathematical symbol is B with this little vector symbol because that indicates it has a direction. So that's important. Um, so that's what magnetic fields are. And now I'm going to introduce field lines. Um, so once again, what are field lines exactly? Well, um, it's just the way that we visualize and illustrate a magnetic field. So I drew this bar magnet over here, these lines, magnetic field lines, that's just how we um, show the field so that we can understand what's going on. And it's basically just a drawing of a field because they are invisible. So it makes it easier. Um, and one very important thing for field lines is that they always flow from north to south. So when you're drawing them, um, it's a very easy rule. You can just remember that they always go from north to south. Um, so this little horseshoe magnet down here, if you want to draw them, just like I've done here, you would just draw those lines in north to south, just like that. And then you can add those little arrows to show which way it's going. Um, and then another really important thing about field lines is that they're continuous loops. They don't have any beginning or end. Um, so I've drawn, I've drawn a solenoid right here. And a solenoid is basically just a coil of wire. Um, but you can see that the field lines actually form a loop and they go right through the center of those coil of wires. Um, so with the bar magnet, I could have drawn the lines continuing to make closed loops, but because it's like a solid bar, um, it's common to draw them this way, but they are continuous loops without a beginning or an end. Um, so that's another unique thing about magnetic field lines, which differs from electric field lines. Um, and then another thing to note is that the density of the lines is proportional to um, the field, which basically means if there's more lines there, then the field is stronger. So right in the center of this solenoid here, the lines are super close to each other. And that means that the field is going to be stronger there than it is over here where there's only two lines going through an area. Um, similar to this bar magnet right here is going to be um, it's going to have a lot stronger of a field at this point. Field's going to be a lot stronger than if it was out here where there's less lines. So that's another important thing if you need to know where the field's the strongest. Um, and then if you need to know the direction of the magnetic field at a very specific point, um, you can use tangent lines to do that. So this is my example of a field line. There's some magnet that I haven't drawn in. This is just one little field line that I've drawn. And if I want to know the direction at point P, I would just draw a tangent line going right through that point, just like that. And that's that can be useful um, if you need if you need it. Um, and then another fun fact I just want to touch on quickly is that um, you can't actually split up the north and south poles. And so you can't really split a field in half or anything. Um, so if, if I were to cut this magnet in half, it wouldn't separate into north and south. It would actually just split into two smaller magnets. And then once again, if you split those two, they would split into four and they just keep going. And each of those magnets will have their own individual magnetic field. All right, so now that we know what magnetic fields are and what field lines are, we're gonna talk about what causes them and how they actually work. Um, so the source of magnetic fields is a magnet, right? But we, in order to understand that, we need to understand the source of magnets themselves. Um, so the source of fields and of magnets um, is the movement of charges, which is basically another way of saying current. Um, so I've drawn two examples down here to kind of show you and explain. So this is a bar magnet, and right away you might be thinking to yourself, there's no electric current going on. Where is the current that's making this field? Um, and there actually is a current. It's just a slightly different ki kind of current that we normally think about. Um, so the bar magnet has electrons in it, and when the electrons move around, that is another way of saying that there are moving little charges in there. So that makes a current, which then creates the field around it. And here is an electromagnet. And this one probably intuitively makes more sense to you because I've drawn a um, electrical circuit here. 
this is a wire with current going through it. Um, and once again, electromagnets are very strong because of that current with the battery hooked up and everything. So that current is going to induce that magnetic field on that electromagnet. Um, and then the next thing I want to talk about is dot notation and how we can tell which direction the field is moving in. Um, so dot notation is super important for exams and homework assignments. Um, it's very, very popular um, in any physics, like early physics class that you're learning about magnets in. Um, so basically it'll have a circle with either a dot or an X in it. And the dot and the X indicates the direction in which it's going. So um, the, the best way that I think about it is I imagine an arrow. So the dot, that means that the field is coming out at you this way in, with respect to this board. So if the plane is this board, then that dot means that the field's coming out. And if there's an X, then it means that the direction of the field is going in that direction. So if you imagine an arrow coming at you, if it's coming at you, you would just see a little dot. So then you know that it's coming at you that way. But if the arrow was going away from you, you would probably see a little X like that. So then you can imagine that the arrow is flying away from you that way. So arrow coming out, arrow going in. Um, and there also are um, hand rules um, that you can use, um, but that's not specifically in my topic. But if you're curious, you definitely can go look up hand rules to figure out with current um, which way the field is going. So you can also use those too. Alright, so the last thing I want to talk about is why do we care about magnetic fields and field lines? Um, the first thing that I really think it helps with is it helps us visualize. Magnetic fields are invisible, so we can't see them. So if we didn't have a way to draw them and actually see them, it'd be really hard to figure out what's going on. And that kind of leads to my second point, which is it helps us understand what's going on. Um, once again, without those pictures and those concepts that we learn with magnetic fields and field lines, we wouldn't be able to really do further analysis and understand what's going on. Um, they help us to solve problems. So um, if you have a homework or exam question about it, um, just that basic understanding will really help you. And uh, it's a foundation for all of the other things that have to do with magnets. So if you're somebody that wants to go on to learn more about magnets or you know, if you're just really interested in them, I think uh, magnetic fields and field lines are two of the most important things to really understand first so that you can build upon it. Um, just like any concept in science, this is like the foundation of that. And then uh, for applications, I just have two I want to talk about. There are a lot of applications for just magnets themselves in the real world, but I just want to talk about two of them that I think specifically apply to magnetic fields. Um, so generators, electric generators, they basically have a wire with a current running through it and that generates a, a field and then because that field is there there's a force that can be acted on this loop of wire and it'll actually rotate it and then that motion can generate um, electrical energy. So that's pretty cool. A lot of um, applications of generators can be used for many different things um, but that's basically how they work summed up. If you are curious about it you can go look at pictures and stuff, they were kind of complicated, so that's why I didn't draw any on the board. I just wanted to touch on it for a little bit. And then the second one is a compass. So the Earth has its own magnetic fields, right? We know that. It has a north and a south pole. Um, and that is how a compass works. If it wasn't for the Earth's magnetic fields, um, then we wouldn't have compasses to direct us to the North Pole. Um, so that's just another really important real life example and um, I could have ended before this clip, but I just wanted to make sure that I told you guys why it's important to understand these things. Um, but this is all I have for you guys. I hope you guys understood and enjoyed it. Um, thanks for watching.